Hi, welcome everybody to episode two of What's the Points, your semi-weekly miles and points news show. I'm your host, Andy Luton from Andy's Travel Blog, and uh, let's get right into it. We have a lot to cover. Uh, first thing on the list, so today is August 1st, 2016, and for American frequent flyers, that is revenue-based day. Hooray! Literally nobody is excited about this except for like maybe half of 1% of travelers. Uh, but let's talk about what that means. So. For the first time in Americans' history, the amount of redeemable miles that you earn, so not like the elite qualifying miles, but the ones that, like if I earn 30,000 miles and I wanna take a flight, that's a redeemable mile. So instead of redeemable miles being based on how like far you fly, so like Dallas to LaGuardia is 1,389 miles. So you'd earn that in redeemable miles whenever you flew to LaGuardia. So instead of that mattering now, it's all about the money. Uh, your loyalty doesn't matter as much anymore. It's all about how much you spend. So gone are like class of service bonuses, gone are like executive platinum bonuses or anything like that. It's simply how much money you spend with American is how much they want to award you with redeemable miles. Now, if that doesn't seem like it makes a ton of sense, honestly, I agree with you. I see why American did it because honestly, they have a ton of people with millions of miles out there. And honestly, American is also in a bit of a revenue crunch right now. Uh, and their expenses are starting to worry investors. Their stock is kind of languishing a little bit. Uh, some people are starting to worry, you know, was the merger a mistake? Jury's still out, uh, but you know, I guess we'll find out whether or not the merger was a mistake. Anyways, I'm trying to be unbiased here. Uh, what really stinks about all of this is that it's now really confusing. Uh, so if, if you don't have status with American and your flight is $200, including taxes and everything, well, that means the amount of redeemable miles is going to be, regardless of where you fly, you could fly to Hong Kong, uh, it's going to be $200, it's probably $25 of government taxes in there. So it's $175, and if you have no status, it's five redeemable miles per dollar less federal taxes. It's really easy to remember, right? And, and actually, so I did some, um, did some math here. So including the changes that American did um, at the beginning of uh, March, March 22nd, I believe it was. So there's now six different ways with a new Platinum Pro um, status level. There are six different ways to earn redeemable miles. There are six different levels on the award chart to redeem these redeemable miles. And there's, in terms of elite qualifying miles, so there's, uh, you know, you can fly on a coach ticket and you're in one elite qualifying mile depending on the airline you fly. Uh, so let's just assume it's American, okay? So uh, you earn one redeemable, or one elite qualifying mile per mile you actually fly. So you still do that with the miles you fly because that's not confusing at all for the average customer, right? Uh, but then if you fly like a discount business class, you earn like two elite qualifying miles per mile you fly. But then if it's a full fare business class, you earn three times the distance you fly. And But then if it's a discount first, it's two times, and full fare first is three times. So six ways of earning redeemable miles, six ways of redeeming redeemable miles, and five different ways of earning elite qualifying miles for a grand total of 17 different variables to consider, 17 different possibilities for earning mileage every time you get on an American Airlines flight. Now, someone like me who travels 100,000 plus miles a year on American, I understand this stuff. There is no prayer that the average everyday customer of American Airlines is going to understand this stuff. And really, that's where American wins because the more confused a passenger is, the better chance they're gonna make a decision that doesn't lead to them maximizing the value of their miles. And that's kind of the big bummer of this. I know American, uh, for a while, using the hashtag going for great. Um, I don't think they did it with this move. I don't think it's in the customer's best interest. Uh, and American needs to look out for itself. I get that, it's a business. Um, but it's not about the revenue, here's the thing, it's not about the revenue you earn on flight X, the flight that I happen to be sitting on right now. Like, that revenue is locked in. The whole point of a loyalty program is to incentivize me enough on that flight 
that the next time that I fly, I spend more money to fly with American. That's the whole point of it. Probably disagree with some people there, but that's what I think the point is. So anyways, uh, as far as reactions go, um, you know, Ben over at One Mile at a Time, Gary Leff over at View from the Wing, and then Brian Kelly over at the Points Guy, and really everybody else uh, took a different kind of take on it. Uh, a lot of people were talking about how, you know, American has kind of lost the, you know, the, the one thing that was different about it um, compared to Delta and United, because now all three of them uh, have literally the exact same redeemable miles earning chart, which, as much as airlines sue each other for copying each other, and as much like Delta's been going at American for trying to get its LAX to Tokyo Haneda uh, route, like really, so okay, United copies, like Control C, Control V, just outright copies Delta's new earnings scheme. Delta doesn't say a word about it. And then two years later, American does the exact same thing and nobody says a word about it. I mean, come on. That's not going for great, that's going for what everybody else is doing. And if we were big enough fans of what Delta and United were doing, we would have already joined them. We were with American because American was different. Now American has leveled the playing field uh, from a loyalty program standpoint, and their operations aren't doing that well. They need to be doing better. So why would you give a bunch of your flyers a reason to start looking around at other airlines? Anyways, okay, sorry. We need to move on. We're probably already going too long. Big news, my favorite travel website turned five years old today. Uh, a lot of people ask me, Andy, how do you find the deals that you find? Simple answer is, I don't. I subscribe to a website. That website, theflightdeal.com. And their sister site, fairdealalert.com. The flight deal is where I find 90% of the amazing airfares that I find. If you have not subscribed to them, go subscribe to them right now. They are fantastic people. Uh, it's just www.theflightdeal.com. Congratulations, guys, on five years. And from the bottom of my heart, thank you. I've literally traveled the world because of you guys. And not only that, but many of my friends and family have traveled the world because of the deals that you find. So from myself, from all of Andy's travel blog readers, from the whole Miles and Points universe, Thank you, uh, and congratulations, and here's to the next five years. Uh, so that's big news. And then finally, a little bit of the news from the weird. So Lufthansa Flyer, and I'll link the story below, uh, posted an article about glass jetways. And until I read the article, I'd never even like considered this before, but why don't you see glass jetways in the United States? Yeah, they're all metal. But you go to Europe and you see these really like cool modern looking glass jetways. Um, and I had never asked why. Well, anyways, Lufthansa Flyer um, found some information that uh, now any airport in the US that wants to build a glass jetway can now do so. But the reason why that they couldn't was because the fire code, airport fire code association, they were worried that if there were a fire that people wouldn't evacuate if there were a glass jetway. Which, that, that makes about as much sense to me, honestly, as American making the decision to go revenue based. So that does it for episode two of What's the Points? We will see you next time. This is Andy from Andy's Travel Blog. Take care, travel safe.